Hello, my darlings. It's Mama Rod. I hope you guys are having a great day. And I was just sort of reflecting on how grateful I am about the decisions I've made in my life. Um, number one, falling in love with and uh, staying committed and dedicated and bonded like glue to my husband uh, since I was 14 years old, since we were 14 years old, because sometimes people take that the wrong way like he was older but no I'm actually two weeks older than him <laughs> um, and just I always it's like my whole little life you know I always have like a little school crush on someone that looked like my husband until I finally saw my husband and then he was my first actual boyfriend you know my first everything and um, you know and it's amazing because I just, I always knew what I wanted and all I really cared about was that I would be that man's woman, you know, I would be his, his wifey, you know, that I would, um, be able to have fun and please him and all the other things that come along with, you know, playing house, um, and having a home and I always loved children, um, you know, and I'm so grateful when I hear other women's stories about how, you know, they broke up with their high school boyfriend or college boyfriend and thought, okay, well, I'm going to go out into the world and I'm going to do better and I'm going to get an apartment. I'm going to live the sex in the city life and all this kind of stuff, you know, and spend my money and go on trips and have nobody telling me what to do. I am so glad. I'm so glad, you know, and women have looked at me like I'm crazy because I submit to my husband and, you know, they're like, oh, but uh, you know, you're constrained on what you can do. And I'm like, that's totally fine. <laughs> you know, it's like submission equals covering and peace and, uh, being cherished and loved. And the thing that all these women out here say that they want more than anything, um, even the hardcore feminists, they would love a big, strong man to wrap his uh, loving arms around them and, you know, say, all right, baby, it's going to be okay. And I got you. And, um, you know, all those kind of wonderful things. Um, but that doesn't come without submission, without surrendering unto that man. And, you know, the younger you guys get started, the better. Um, really women are ready. You know, when we were 14 years old, why do you think that the beginning age for sex is so young? Um, I mean, these days it's like middle school, so that's crazy, but you know, basically young people uh, are ready, you know, and that's why women used to get married off as soon as they had their cycle. They were a woman. It's the truth. I mean, you know, so it's hard to control uh, women or boys, but women in particular, because if they're ready, then they're going to find somebody that will have sex with them. You know what I mean? Um, uh, you know, so that's why certain cultures are incredibly strict and they have uh, male accompany, uh, accompaniments, a company, a company, whatever with them, like chaperones, you know, to make sure that they're doing what they're supposed to do and they're not, getting themselves into any trouble and uh you know all that kind of stuff so um so I was just thinking how glad that I'm so grateful that you know it, the trouble comes in any relationship and challenges come in any relationship and I'm so grateful that through all the different seasons of our life again since 14 to 47 that's a lot of different seasons you know a lot of different um, experiences and challenges and trials and all sorts of things and times when you think especially in the beginning where I was like oh he can't stand me and you know all these kind of things and I thought oh we're never we're never gonna make it and uh, you know but I hung in there and he hung in there and you know church helped me a lot I, I went to one church and I happened to get very lucky <laughs> you know it's called the Church of Brotherly Love um, and it was just a little small storefront church, uh, in the hood <laughs> and, um, great pastor. And he just was, uh, he's almost retired. So he's got someone else kind of taking his place now, but anyway, we moved, but uh, we, you know, we were there for 18 years, um, and stayed connected for over 20, 21 years now, <sighs> maybe longer. So anywho, um, 
But that was like, uh, besides for Herbalife and Jim Rohn and personal development and getting some red pill, you know, information that way, the Bible was a real red pill for me. Like, you know, just the truth about our roles and, you know, what God called me to do as a woman, as a wife, you know, and um, the order of the family and so many things that I was like, oh, I, I'm challenging him. I didn't mean to. I thought I was helping or sticking up for myself or some such nonsense. And I realized that no, daddy's getting upset because there's an order to things and you're not supposed to mm, defy, you know, what it is that he wants us to do or me to do. And we're not supposed to, uh, you know, uh, challenge him. You know, you're allowed to ask questions, but you're not supposed to uh, butt heads with the boss, <laughs> you know, and he is the head, um, and he's the leader. So anyway, I learned so many things and I'm just so grateful because I've seen so many women that left those marriages and relationships and said, Oh, because we came across these challenges, um, it, it wasn't, he wasn't the one I, and I'm still looking for the one. So I'm going to keep looking for the one because I'm worth it. And all this kind of stuff, you know, and it's like, no, he probably was the one because that's the one you decide to lay down with and have kids with. So, um, yeah, you're supposed to make it work. And, you know, the, God never promised that, um, you know, we'd have uh, perfect husbands, that we'd be a perfect wife. But he gave us the blueprint to to have harmony and order in a home because we're supposed to submit to our husbands and everything. And the more that we do that, the more they will love and cherish us. But we can't be manipulative. We can't, you have to really give your life to your man and to your family. That is what you are called to do. And that's the way that it works. Um, you know, so, uh, I, I am incredibly grateful that I have not been out there, you know, for years trying to oh maybe this one's the one and getting to know somebody and then you know again because I've been with my husband my whole life the thought of being intimate with someone else freaks me out I think it's really gross um you know but uh oh my goodness uh I, I couldn't imagine um you know men's DNA builds up in women. They, women, uh, be, begin to carry the traits of the men that they're with. And, uh, I've talked about this before, how, um, some women that I know personally have said that they, they noticed and they realized, I mean, they didn't even know the science behind it or the spiritual aspect behind it. But they said, you know, after I'm with someone, I find myself acting like that guy. It's so weird. You know, I, I take on certain traits of that guy and I'm like, oh, that's a thing, you know? So it's, it's definitely very interesting, um, to see the things that we've read about, heard about studies and whatnot, um, play out right before your eyes, people that, you know, um, <sighs> so, you know, all I could say is that nothing's ever easy and what's the saying and anything that's worth it isn't easy you have to work for it um but it's so it's so worth it it's so uh the rewards of the love and intimacy that you build you know with your husband by making it through each challenge and each chapter and each season that just builds more and more love. Oh, I gotta go. I love you guys. Talk to you soon.